I'm Erica Jacoby, and this is another Higher Things video short. Woke Wednesday takes on woke righteousness. Like, subscribe, ring the bell, get the app, donate. If you love what we're doing here at Higher Things, pass it on the faith to the next generation. Like our videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel, ring the bell for notifications, get our app, and donate. Your tax-deductible gift keeps Higher Things, that youth organization that's all about putting the gospel into the ears of our youth. It keeps us a rolling. Wednesdays are all about being woke, and today I am interviewing Pastor Borghart instead of the other way around, just because, I guess. Um, he lost control with Sandra Madden and me talking about domestic, uh, domestic violence, and um, yeah, I just haven't given him back the reins on Wednesday. Um, hi, Pastor Borghart. How's it going? Going great. Thanks for uh, thanks for letting me drive again. Um, so we're going to talk about woke righteousness. What is woke righteousness? Because I think it might be a term you made up. Yeah, it's a thing, right? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I did make it up. So uh, woke righteousness is the is, is is something we've all observed if we've dealt with someone who is incredibly woke, um, and it's this idea that I'm so justified. I'm so right. I'm so, um, what I, what I believe is so woke. And I know that everybody believes that I'm right, that it gives me the right and to, to judge you as not being enough, no matter what that thing is. So if it's racism, you're, um, I'm, I'm, I'm open eyed and clear. You're a racist. If it's, if it's culture, I'm on the right side of culture and you're on the wrong side of culture. If it's gay rights, I'm, I'm, I'm open-minded and, and all of this, you're not. And, the, and the sort of the telltale thing about it is that being this righteous justifies us before okay. each other and um, the people around us. It all also, and we're going to get to this, allows us to be even not very loving um, to others, but that's, um, for other okay. questions. Okay. So essentially you're kind of, what you're talking about is we do have free speech in this country, right? Um, so are you kind of saying that woke righteousness is maybe a little incompatible with free speech? I'm just going to kind of try to repeat hmm. what you said. Cause I, I, I think I, I, th I think I see, I've seen what you're talking about. You kind of see activists that are kind of exploiting political correctness and kind of trying to silence other view play other viewpoints and maybe playing up or emphasizing their membership in historically oppressed groups, maybe. Um, and then kind of, you see people responding to criticism or perhaps stating a viewpoint that's different than somebody else's with um, the accusation of being racist, maybe not being aware of your privilege or um, in so doing, kind of perpetuating the systemic racist that we, racism that we've talked about. Um, and I think the response to that ha that I've seen, at least on social media and in the news, is kind of a call for censorship and um, using what they call uh, deplatforming, right, which is um, known as shutting down controversial speakers or somebody you don't agree with, right? I, you see those kinds of things going on. Did I kind of did I kind of state that right? So More or less. speech is free as long as it's the speech that I want it to be, as long as it, it as long as it's speech like I want it to be. And that is a changing, moving thing. I think that's one element of the woke righteousness. Um, I'm right. And I can set the language and I can set the discussion. And I as again, I'm right. You're not. Now, I don't believe this is unique to. Wokeness. Okay. I think this is systemically sinful for all of us. And we have to, we're going to do, um, if my understanding is correct, if I'm reading memo is correct, we're going to look at systemic racism and race theory. Well, we've done that one. We've done, yeah, we're going to, we've done that one. We ta we've tapped into that a little bit, but yeah, I think we'll, we'll need to look at critical race so, theory, um, so, in future. Yep. So we can, we can have a conversation as long as the words are, are, are formed by me. We can discuss things as long as the arguments are made by me. And we can we can and we can move forward as long as we're moving forward in my direction. Anything else is condemned 
and I'm not just wrong, but you need to be canceled and and basically exterminated. Um, and there's a reason why we wanted to touch this, and it's not because it's political. Um, I wanted to right. talk about this today because you know we had an election yesterday, and we got to find a way to move forward. And we have a way of doing so, this on both sides. Give me a second longer there, yes, Miss Interviewer. Sure. We have a, yeah, it's fun to have the chair until you actually have to let the person talk. So, um, but uh, uh, what's great about this is, um, is that we're doing this always. This is why this is, this is why it's works righteousness. We're always doing it. We're doing this on both sides. I'm so justified. I'm so right. It allows me to um, burn down your abortion clinic. That's just wrong. Right. I'm right. so justified. I'm so right. It allows me to drown out you with horns. Um, mm -hmm. I'm so justified. I'm so right. It allows me to get violent on both ends, on both ends. And that ends in death. Because again, the, 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 the determining factor, as long as it's me on what's right and what's wrong, what can be said and what can't be said, when I'm the determining factor, it's an always moving target. Um, Amy Comedy Barrett's, uh, her, her confirmation hearing where the, the Hawaiian Senator calls her out for mm -hmm. using a term sexual preference, mm -hmm. which right. up until the Hawaiian Senator called her out for it was a perfectly acceptable way of speaking. But in the course of the day, after the Hawaiian Senator called her out for that, by the end of the day, Webster's dictionary had changed its online version to say that this was not permissible speech. It's hate speech. Yeah, right. Hate speech. Mm -hmm. As long as I'm the determining factor or those that are uh, th those who believe that they're so right are the determining factors on on who gets to say what and when they get to say it and how they get to say it, we're going mm -hmm. and and that we're so justified, we're so self-righteous, we're so woke righteous that we can like hurt and harm others. Uh, and this is true on the other side. Mm -hmm. We're so own woke righteous that we can hurt others. We're in, we're in a bad, bad, bad shape. Um, mm -hmm. And so the reason why I wanted to talk about this is, is, is because we had an election. I mean, that's why I wanted to talk about it. Now you can ask your next question. So, okay. Well, you kind of answered my second one, but so then what, you know, I think you've already said that woke righteousness is sort of um, doing maybe some of the opposite things it wants to do. It's, it, we, we're, we're seeing hate and judgment being sort of, the the fruit of what's going on um, right now in our culture. So what is the Christian response? What Where do we go from here as Christians? So first we have to identify it in our neighbor and in our us, in, in ourselves and in us. All right. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I'm so right. I'm so loving that I'm hating you. <laughs> yeah. I'm open-minded I'm open-minded. You should be open-minded too, because if you're not open-minded, like I'm open-minded, then I'm going to hate you. And I'll be justified in my extermination of you. That's why this is a my myth canceling of you. Yeah, yeah my right. canceling of you. I just said it a different yeah. way. I just called it what yeah. it is: murder. Yeah. Um, is is because I'm so right. The only way out of this is Christ's righteousness, and we're a Christian channel, and so we could say this. I mean, look at the way I'm dressed. Um, the only way out of this is for us to confess we're not very loving. And we use our rightness to judge others on all sides and figure out a way that we can at least be civil in our discussions. That we can, um, that uh, Senator Feinstein, great moment at the, after the Amy Comey Barrett stuff, um, she goes over and she hugs Lindsey Graham, the Republican, mm -hmm, and she got mm -hmm. a bunch of flack, but, but that was a, I thought props to, and I mean, everybody knows how I feel about politics, but pro oh, look at me props to her for that because, yeah. because what she basically said was, you know, I'm not going to win this one, but that I can still love you. You know yeah, what I mean? Right. And, and, and sometimes you have to look at somebody you're having an argument with and going, I think you got me but I still love you. I mean, right. I mean, that's what we have. We've had in higher, we've had some serious, serious, serious meetings and higher things where we've discussed some very important um, things which pertain to our church's youth. And there's a winner and there's a loser. And sometimes we have to just look at each other and go, 
you got me today, but I still love you. Yeah. So whether we don't know Thank as you. we record this on Tuesday, whether Orange Man Bad won or we don't know. Sleepy Joe won, Sleepy Joe, uh, or if Kanye is our new president. Uh, we just don't know. <laughs> we just don't know. We don't know. We don't know. The polling could know. be all wrong and it could be Kanye, Kanye, Kanye all the way. So, but we do know, we do know God's good and gracious will is always done. Right. That so we, we do that, know. So we know that he's going to give us the, the leader that he would have for us, whether it is one we deserve or one we don't deserve. But either way, we've got to figure out a way at the end of the day to love one another, to truly love. Now, now there's, a, there's the deal where love has become something else, where love is love if you agree with me. Mm. That's not how that mm -hmm. works. That's not how that works. And we can see it and we can recognize it in others and we need to also recognize it in ourselves. So I think the only way out of this is Christ righteous for us as Christians is to look at somebody and stop them and give them a hug, a uh, social distance hug, jazz hands, you know, elbow. What I mean? little elbow an elbow. Something. Yeah. Say, look, yeah. whoa, we're not agreeing to disagree because we're not going to agree ever. Um, but we are going to love one another in the midst of it. And I believe that Christ died for you and you believe that, 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 um, Christ died for me, or I believe that Christ died for you and you don't believe in a God at all, but where you at least love me. And so let's have that relationship move forward instead of some sort of, and, and, and sort of with free speech that, that allows us to have a respect for what other people say, a respect for them. I may not agree with your, what you say, but I agree with your right to say it. Excellent. Well, thank you. This has been very interesting. I'm, I'm intrigued by your invention of a new term. I'm going to have to Google it and see if I can really give you credit for that. But, uh, um, I so, would just like so to bottom. say that, that, that being in this interviewer, if you interview each year, it's kind of nice. It's kind of nice. Yeah. I, it's not been. You like that? I'm kind of liking it. I'm kind of liking it. You like. Hmm. So, so what do you say we replace as woke righteousness with Christ righteousness? How's that? I think that's That'd a be great good, idea. good way to end this. It's very hosty. All right. Well, thank you for joining us again on another um, Higher Things video short for Woke Wednesday. I'm Erica Jacoby, and this has been another Higher Things video short.